if we if we remember from week one, Fnatic played Harbor Viper. Okay, so Fnatic is trying to mix stuff up, and they're trying to play Harbor Viper on Icebox, which historically has been one of their best maps across like the entirety of this team, um, in previous metas, of course, but. So they ran the Harbor Viper and it didn't go very well. Every time I watch Icebox, I've just got this feeling that when I watch teams play Harbor on Icebox, it looks pretty bad. And so I went in and did some data crunching, some number crunching. And it turns out that Harbor has a pretty bad win rate. It's 48% uh, across the entire year, across the entire globe, as far as all VCT teams. Loud is four and one on the map with Harbor Viper. And if you take them out of the data set, then the Harbor win rate drops to 40%, which is very, very poor. Uh, so basically my intuition that Harbor Viper looks kind of bad, or at least Harbor in general looks kind of bad on the map seems to be at least somewhat supported by the numbers. So anyway, I made a tweet basically summarizing all of this. To my surprise, Boaster replied to me because I figured, why not? Why don't we actually take a look at this game? Why don't we take a look at maybe a couple of their previous Icebox games? Because like, here's an example of them from last year during the league where they played Icebox and they were a very dominant Icebox team at this point. We can see the comp is different, um, but I just thought it'd be interesting just to kind of like think about the map a little bit more and uh, see if we can actually cook Fnatic an Icebox comp that fits their team and how they want to play the game. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the map itself. Let's, let's just kind of like come up with some key points. What do you need to do on this map? So the first thing I think you need to do on Icebox is you need to contest middle. Um, you need to do something about middle. On attack, you need to have something that can create pressure middle. And on defense, you need to have something that could hold middle. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter whether the holding middle is coming from alarm bots or chamber trips or whatever here, or if it's a killjoy coming and putting an alarm bot here so you can't lurk under here, and then you have somebody else holding tube or something like that. But regardless, if you allow the attackers to get up here, and then, you know, as we've had in the meta for a very long time, this Viper smoke, and you don't contest this, and then they can, you know, get over here, or they can get through here, or they can get through here, or they can come up tube, this creates a lot of problems. So you have to have something that can contest middle. So that's that'll be point number one, and I'm just gonna take some notes on the side. So every Icebox comp that's gonna be successful, I think needs to have those two things figured out. Uh, and you can do that with a lot of different things as well as we'll talk about, but that's point number one. Point number two is you need to have access to verticality. I think this is one of those maps where being able to get on top of stuff creates a lot of opportunities. So if you're not playing an agent like an Omen, like a Jet, like a um, a Raze, <clears throat> or even potentially a Sage, if you're not playing any of these agents, I think you're leaving some value on the table. And I think that you should probably put at least one of these in every Icebox comp. You need to either, and probably both, you need to be able to stall a push on attack or you need to be extremely good on the retake and preferably both it's really really hard to shut down the attackers like flooding into the site because you can't just throw a single piece of utility or you can't just watch a single smoke it just doesn't work like that and so the attack has a huge amount of advantage. And so the best thing that you can do on defense is to slow them down as they start to exec onto the site by maybe putting a wall in their way, by maybe having, you know, some mollies that stop them from just kind of everybody just flooding onto the site, by maybe having like a raise nade that explodes, kind of stops them or like cuts their attack in half. So let's say, you know, okay, what's what's like a standard uh, icebox comp? Maybe something kind of like this. Is sort of the standard comp and so let's say these players are all kind of coming in and the jet is coming in the chaos flashing and trying to scale the vipers may be back here and then the sova is like throwing utility and so if you can somehow cut off these two players from the other players and kill these two players before everybody else can reinforce them then that is like a pretty good way to play defense on this map 
Um, and so, you know, the, the most common way that we see used is we have this toxic screen, right? Which is, um, goes across the top of 410 and it creates this sort of barrier that, you know, decays people as they come through and also maybe kind of just like briefly cuts people off from their teammates. So you could, you know, take a fight and not get traded, for example. Um, and so you want to, you want to like slow people down as they're getting into the site. And so another thing that we have seen in the past is that an agent like Sage is quite good at this because if, if the attackers are flooding in, right, you're, you're flooding in and trying to just like take over the site through multiple different lanes and also down the rope like this, it can be really, really difficult to deal with. But if you can like barrier orb this side and you can slow orb this side, and then you can just take a fight, uh, you know, towards like this one person, now it's a little bit more manageable as the attackers are trying to take the site. Once the attackers have planted the spike, the, the post plant for them tends to be pretty easy. Like you can play it with a lot of these like late lurks, you can play it with mollies and like cringe lineup stuff. You can play it uh, just kind of like stall and spam through smokes. There's a lot of ways that you can play the post plant and there's so many angles to check for the attack or for the defense as they retake the site. That's really, really hard to actually, uh, you know, salvage around where the attackers have planted. So being able to stall that attack and not allow them to just like instantly plant the spike and then retreat to their post plant positions is really important. You have to make it expensive for them to be able to actually plant the spike. Um, let's talk about the Harbor Viper real quick. So the comp that Fnatic is playing is Harbor Viper. Um, Harbor Viper, Sova, Jet, and KJ. Sova, Jet, and KJ. Okay, so this comp has, uh, it has some recon, which is good. It has access to verticality, which is good. It has mid minding with the KJ, which is good. It has the ability to create pressure middle with the Viper, which is good. The main thing that this comp does not have uh, very much of is the ability to slow down the attack. Um, and you might say, well, they have a Viper, they have mollies, they have KJ and mollies and stuff like that. But it's really not enough. That's, that's the biggest thing is it's not enough because you have two agents Harbor and Jet, and kind of to some extent Sova, that don't really create any barriers to the other team getting onto the site. Specifically, these two have like zero ability to stop people from hitting the site. You know, Harbor does have a slow on the wall or whatever. So it it, it does something, but it's it's not really being respected. And as teams are like executing onto the site, you know, usually they're they're throwing like a dizzy and a KO flash and like a raise is double or a jet is like dashing in onto this angle and they've got the viper wall up like this or whatever and so you just get annihilated on the site even if you have like a harbor wall or a viper wall just like standing in the way um so again you need to be able to like cut off the scalers from joining their teammate on the site i think to have a good defense and neither of these agents is good at that um i'm gonna go out on a kind of like a hot take limb here and just say that jet is the most overrated agent on this map i think that jet is actually a bad agent on this map uh because by playing jet you are forcing your entire team into bad situations and what i mean by that is now we are we're way beyond a point i guess we're kind of talking specifically about like vct and and professional teams we're at a point now where teams are not getting surprised by Jet playing on Generator. They're not getting surprised by Jet top, uh, jumping over the top of pipes and taking a peek. They're not getting surprised by Jet solo walking down middle and taking an op shot. They're not getting surprised by Jet on top of yellow. These angles that got a ton of value back in like 2022 are not working because everybody's aware that these are plays that Jets are going to make. And basically they're aware that these are plays that Jets have to make. Because if Jets don't do these things, if they don't get value from these like crazy angles, then Jet is like essentially useless, right? Because Jet provides no utility. She does absolutely nothing for the team other than being a danger with the operator on some like strange angles. 
and most of those angles are understood and counterplayed by every team. So, like, basically, what you have to do to get your jet value now is you have to babysit her with other agents. So, for example, if you want to play this angle on jet, and you want to go like this, you have to still have somebody else, like, watching your back. There has to always be somebody here. Otherwise, Jet can just be walked up on by the attackers and shot in the back, and you get zero value. Okay? Same kind of thing goes for playing over in yellow. I'm going to clear all this stuff out. Is that if you want the Jet to play here, or here, or here, or any of these like really aggressive spots, if you don't have somebody else here uh, shooting the drone or the Dizzy, Again, you just get either annihilated by utility or you have to instantly dash out and give up the angle. And what a lot of teams are doing is because their jets are trying to get value and they're not getting value, right? Their jet is like pushed up here, for example, and you still have like one player here to shoot the, uh, the drone. And then you also have like a KO or, or whoever else I'm, again, this is not not using the Fnatic comp as an example, but you'll often see like three players with the operator, which is crazy because you shouldn't need two players to help the jet get value with the operator. That just is not efficient. It's not a good way to play the game because like if you have to have the drone shot by one person and then you also flash off of that after the jet takes a shot just to get the jet out of there with maybe a kill, like look how much... You know, if we have three players here, how big do you think the holes in the defense elsewhere are? Like, they're enormous. It's impossible to play the map if you have to dedicate dedicate three players to getting value out of the operator, which is supposed to be the, the weapon that, like, takes over an entire side of the map. Let's actually watch the, um, the Fnatic comp. Right off the bat, Harbor is not stopping anybody. If this is a rush, Harbor gets run over. There's nothing, nothing they can do. Absolutely nothing they can do. Obviously, this is, like, a, a stack set up from Fnatic. They're hoping that there's no pressure towards towards B, so they throw this wall initially. Just kind of like a stalling, almost kind of like uh puffer fish or like don't come here guys. You definitely don't want to come through this wall. Uh basically it's just like, okay, don't don't come here. Um which maybe looks weak depending on how you read it or not. Like you said, so starting off here. And I'm gonna guess that it does look weak because it looks like they scan a couple players. So a jet, okay, cool. Very likely the stack is at A. If there is a stack, there's a harbor who's throwing a wall off the rip, which means that very likely the harbor is just like not wanting us to come here. So we're gonna go there and uh, we're just gonna push through this harbor wall because we have two flashes that are really good at pushing through the wall. Activity with Fnatic though is a tick in the box, right? Like any adjustments in that regard are generally a good indicator that they've been hard at work because again, kickoff was lackluster. Am I gonna make a video out of this? Uh, yeah, maybe, I think so. To bring to the forefront to already seeing a little adjustment here certainly is at least okay and so basically we can see harbor started off throws the wall and then once the wall is done there's like n nothing that they can do to still hold on to space so the harbor just has to fall all the way back into mid site and wait for rotations from his teammates to reinforce so not a great start in terms of holding the b site and then the wall and the uh the wingman plant i mean this is like about as safe of a plant as you're gonna get you have a wall and a non-player planting the spike so like basically you know if, if we had several mollies maybe we could kill this but we don't um Obviously, it's a pistol round, but we're just not in a position to throw utility. And because we have a harbor who has no stalling utility and a jet who has no stalling utility, it's only really three agents that could kill the wingman and stop this plant from happening. So, plant happens. Okay, now let's obviously run pistol round, but let's look at the retake. Okay, so jet Jet's contribution for the retake is basically just running in and shooting people. Um, no smokes at this point of the round. Uh, we have no flashes to take a fight, so it's just dry swinging. They're trying to cove and then stick in the cove, which is fine. 
<laughs> but Benji just runs into the cove and kills the player and then one shots Alf here. So overall, it's basically just like depending on their shooting to win the retake. We have our standard Viper wall. We've got Harbor and Jet together. We've got the turret watching middle. We have a Sova over here on A. So, I mean, right off the bat, um, A site looks extremely weak, right? Because there's basically just a Viper wall stopping us from going in there. And that can be shut down by KO potentially. So Heretics kind of creates pressure at both A and B. They show both their initiators, 1B, 1A, which means that Fnatic kind of has to like hold their positions. They can't over-rotate to one side or the other because they've shown two, two potential sides that could be a hit, um, which is kind of the power of the double initiator on a map like this, is that either one of those could, could be a fast rush potentially. Um, okay, so the Durka... Again, trying to find value on this jet, basically just has to walk up with his dash, wins a gunfight. And of course, I mean, here's the thing, like jet will find value on this map simply because if you put your one of your best players on an agent that has an escape and you allow them to just like be kind of stupid with their positioning, you're gonna find some timings and stuff. But it's like, there's so many opportunities for it to go wrong. Like if he loses that, then I'm pretty sure Heretics just like immediately hits B site. And, and look at look at Fnatic's positioning. Fnatic are up five to four, and all four of them are or all five of them are in their spawn. They have no map control. How are they ahead by a player with no map control? You know, like if we had to draw a line of the map control that Fnatic has, it's basically like this. Like that seems insane to me. How can you be five players? And I, I know that they're they're trying to just like play their numbers right because they have they have better weapons, they have numbers advantage. They kind of just like want uh, heretics to hit a site, and then I guess they'll go for a retake. Maybe is the plan. It just seems kind of crazy that they don't have any map control despite being ahead in agents. And this is going to cause problems because now it's just allowing heretics to group up correctly and just go wherever they want. And it's not necessarily that Heretics has like the perfect read of they're just going A because they know Fnatic is not there, but it just makes it really difficult for, for Fnatic to be in the right place because it's like a 50-50. Even though they're, they're ahead in the round, they're allowing Heretics to take a 50-50 to, uh, to guess correctly. And is there any taxing or stalling for getting into the site? Uh, nope, there is not. Spike goes down without any real fight. And I don't know if this is necessarily like Chronicle feeling like, well, we need to be, you know, taxing them for getting into the site. We need to not allow them to get this down so easily when we have numbers advantage. So he comes in and like tries to take some sort of fight, but it's not really supported by anything. And I mean, again, they only have the Sova to really set up anybody with utility because the jet doesn't do anything. Harbor doesn't do anything. KJ doesn't do anything. So they're just kind of taking a dry fight. So they basically use the harbor wall to just sort of refresh the viper wall, which doesn't really do anything if people are already on the other side of the wall. And they lose the bonus. Um, okay, so let me just talk about like this utility on the retake real quick. So the wall, they have this Viper wall, right? Fuel runs out, Chronicle dies. Um, then the wall that they throw is basically just the same wall. Now, the, the awesome thing about the harbor wall is that you can tailor the wall to whatever you need, right? Because you can, you can wiggle it, so it can, it can be in a bunch of different shapes. So I think, you know, th and this is what you see from somebody like Forsaken, 
um, or, or twoies, but particularly Forsaken, is that he uses this wall. Basically, every wall that he throws is slightly different because he does it whatever he thinks is the correct, like the most optimal way to use the wall for himself. So let's say, for example, that as, as Harbor is trying to come in from here, instead of just throwing this wall to like recreate the Viper wall, what if he throws a wall that cuts off like these angles from back sight. So it comes here, maybe it comes like this, and then it comes like this. And I don't know if you could necessarily do exactly this, but something like this, where you, you're stopping anybody who would be peeking you from, from like back in these corners, right? You don't have anybody shooting you from over here. You don't have anybody shooting you from default. Like you stop so much stuff and it allows your team to just kind of like flood in like this, maybe take one fight here, maybe wrap around like this, or maybe come in and get up here, or maybe like sneak into the like this spot over here behind underneath the rafters. Like there's so many things that you can do with the wall that just kind of recreating the Viper wall with the Harbor wall is like not even getting value out of the agent at all. Again, I feel like heretics really, if, if I were to look at the map right now and I'm heretics, I mean, is there any of these spots, even assuming Fnatic has full rifles right now, am I afraid of hitting any of these spots? Like if I send five people into a jet Sova, am I afraid of anything? No. If I send five people into a Harbor KJ, am I afraid of anything? No. If I send people into a Viper, am I afraid of anything? No. Like none of these really seems to be like able to repel my attack. Like this is such a good example. So Heretics is hitting into the stack. Again, obviously I understand that they have weak, weak weapons, but they're hitting into the stack and Fnatic just doesn't have anything to stop them. So perfectly way to describe Team Heretics. Five man hits, going in with a thrash as well. Yeah, this is looking so clean. Like, okay, the recon stalls them for a second, like one second of stall, and then you just continue to push forward. Okay, so we've got another rifle round. We've got Durka on the Operator. So this is, this is really key, because Operator, very strong, should be able to kind of start to exert a lot of control over the game. So Durka goes pipes, immediately gets knifed. And again, what I, what I was talking about before, if we want value out of the operator, we still have to babysit the jet, okay? Got to have the Sova watching, because otherwise jet gets shot in the side, and you get, you know, a wasted op. So, now we get to see pressure created middle with the Viper orb. A couple players get spotted. Harbor just jump spotting because that's all really Harbor can do as far as like holding map control right now. Okay, now we're worried. We can see Fnatic kind of like drifting back. We're a little bit scared because KJ Harbor is not a very good fighting force. So if they pressure us, is KJ Harbor going to be able to stop them? Probably not. Sova kind of starting to fade over towards this direction because feels like middle is not strong, which is now leaving Durka exposed. You know, if, if this timing was different, if Heretics had somebody lurked here and now they just like walked up here, they just killed the operator for free. And so this can't feel comfortable for Fnatic. It obviously doesn't feel comfortable for them based on how they're moving around the map. And they're like trying to hedge, like the Sova is trying to hedge into a quick rotation B, but also not just leaving Durka completely alone. Like this is about a good, as good a position as you could have as the Sova, but it's just not strong. Like all this really takes is, let's say Heretics is grouped up here and they've got, you know, KO, Gecko, and they just throw both flashes out here and they just rush. Like A side is free. A side is completely free if they just five man hit A. But instead they're going B. And again, the double initiator allows them to kind of kind of pretend, you know? Like it, it's hard for Fnatic to be like, well, we saw a Gecko flash B, but I mean maybe the KO's A. We don't know. So it's it's kind of hard to get a read on, on where the attack is actually hitting. Waiting for the right opportunity, Team Heretics. They're always waiting for And I mean, dude, like look at Chronicle's position. This is so exposed. 
And basically the only thing that you're banking on here is that somehow Chronicle is going to kill like three people as they come in. And, and there's going to be flashes. There's going to be a Dizzy up here. There's going to be a Kale flash over here. There's going to be people just running in. Like, how is he supposed to kill three people when there's two flashes and five people attacking his position and he has no escape? This kind of everything to be off cooldown for them to hit on their second interval. Look at that as well. Exactly. Instantly deleted. Alpha just, I, I Tries to play outside of the range of the knife, gets pushed into the open, instantly dies. Okay, so Boaster throws up this wall to stall them. This is this is like not bad. This is okay for the harbor. They're hoping the the, the placement of this wall is actually good because they're hoping that either somebody's going to get caught on this side of the wall, or they're hoping that maybe the wingman just gets thrown in to try and plant, and then they can kill the wingman and drop the spike on the other side of the harbor wall. There's no threats on the plant potentially. They've got wingman to go and get that done. They've got. But the Sage Wall reinforces the plant, and boom, plant goes down. Okay, now what does Fnatic do? How are they supposed to retake this? The only way they retake this is if Durka is somehow able to just shoot people, <laughs> basically. Um, this is another thing they can do. They're investing the, the Sova Alt to try and clear out yellow, because they don't have any mollies to clear out yellow, it looks like. So this is another way that they can do it, and it is going to work out, but it requires an ultimate. Still, still a little sketchy, but they get it done. I mean, good use of the ultimate by Fnatic, and and using the tools that they had to get the defuse. But it was definitely not like a simple, straightforward defensive round. Okay, we'll watch one more round. Um, so we've got, we're like really trying to hold on to this here. Two to five. We go naked operator, bunch of light armors, still have the KJ ults. This is like a hyper important round in this half. And the setup is once again, we're at one, one, three. And the three is with the op, which just, God, just seems so expensive. <laughs> like, not only are we buying the most expensive weapon in the game, but we're also requiring three agents to be positioned with it. It's like so incredibly expensive to play defense this way. This should now put question marks with heretics. That mid rounding we were talking about that you highlighted, is that going to present itself as a problem again? Here. Dirk is really not sitting back for a second. This guy wants it. Let's fall off the angle. We are seeing the Killjoy LT ready to be used on A, so I, I wonder if it's going to be something where they run in while. Okay, it's so they KJ ult. Now, ideally, we would have a way to slow this down so they don't just come in and get it replant right but we don't have any mollies here both of our molly characters are on b and since harbor does nothing to stop this and jet does nothing to stop this it should basically just be all right replant on a have to do full retake for the defense so if heretics goes into the site they need to make sure that they're planting where they can play the post plant from okay poster gonna be detained here all good, Chronicle. worth it. Yep, nice pick on the lurk. Bit of a lurk. There's the lockdown coming in. Can they still hold this plant? Is that going to be a problem for Yen's? Actually going to be trying to be proactive during this. That's not a bad idea. Can only slow down the roll. A touch capturing, I believe, two in that. Detaining okay, they break the lockdown. And now get to kind of hold the side itself. They have not and now, with no lockdown, how does Fnatic retake this? Again, it's just completely dry. Back at all. They are playing deep, dedicated towards the site. First shot goes astray, and now they're starting to block. This spacing is a little awkward for Fnatic. And they gotta get a move on. Who's still waiting? Gonna spot out one. Finds the shot he wanted towards Leo. That's just too slow. Like, there's just no the way. To set in and flying to the site. Now down to the back line. I think they do end up winning this. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, it's just, it's so labored. It's so labored. Um, okay, cool. 
So I think we can kind of all understand. Like, the defense is a huge problem with this comp that Fnatic is playing. Um, so just for contrast, I want to look at Loud. Just that Sen haven't worked on this map as much as some of the others in their pool. And if they've used this time accurately... So we, we can actually see, this is, this is the wall that Boaster used. That's the Loud wall on Pistol. And maybe they can come out with another incredible map win. That's not going to help. Sassy going down there at the start of the round. No, and Les just takes a fight here. Did Les just walk up and take this fight? Is that what happened? Extraordinarily good against Louds too. It's just that Sen haven't worked on this map as much as some of the others yeah. in there. The Viper is the one and taking the fight aggressively. Accurately, in terms of getting the plants down. Massive one was Les taking that early phase, that early peak. Okay, so this is actually really interesting. Um, so we were, we were watching Fnatic, they would get a kill and then they would be in like this flat setup with like two players here, a player here, a player here, and a player here. But what Loud is doing is they get a kill and then they just go stack one of the sites and they leave their, their one player that can kind of like hold with information to play solo and middle. So this is way, way different than what Fnatic was doing because if Sentinels hits the loud site with four, they probably just lose the fight. And then if they go to the other site, then they're gonna have an early warning and then they're gonna have a really strong numbers advantage retake. So here we've got the Harbor, who's shown presence here on the pistol round. We've got the Viper at A, we've got the KJ here. So in this case, you know, one of the things that we were talking about is the, sort of like the stopping players, the, the players on this comp that can actually like stop you from coming into a site. We've got Viper at A with the wall and two mollies or a molly and an alarm bot. It's kind of hard to tell. So that's like quite a bit of stopping power at A. We've got multiple mollies there plus the decay plus more information. In middle, as a trade-off in middle, we've decided to essentially sacrifice control of this part of the map. Um, and so they're basically, Loud is basically just like willing to gamble, it seems like. They know that the, it's impossible for this comp to actually hold the map like uh, like safely, I guess would be the best way to put it. And so instead, they're gambling. They're making themselves relatively strong A, very strong B, and weak middle. And they're just hoping that Fnatic doesn't find the weak middle. Not really an opportunity here for Tens to be able to to get the alt online i don't think instead looking more like a standard a exec now tens is getting in position and when there's nothing and off of timing when there's nothing coming through the b wall they just immediately start rotating a so they're going to be in a 4-1 basically as fanatic hits the a site combo the gen g were using it so good yeah choose to break it you're going to be staying right into the sun the flash and another thing that you'll notice here is that instead of trying to hold the site at all, Loud is basically hoping that Sentinels over-aggresses into them, but they're setting up to immediately retake. Like, there's no, there's, there's not gonna be any time for Sentinels to plant the spike and then fall back into their post-plant positions because Loud is going to be retaking as Sentinels tries to fall back into their post-plant. Right? Spike finishes planting and Loud is already retaking. Quarters down underneath rafters. Kawazin wins his one out versus second. Still, good for the position for it. And Tenzer certainly uses ult now for this. Making sure that they can't use any of that post line util. Keen and eager. Still going to be a really hard retake with this loud comp. Off. Over the top of the ropes. This is a real dangerous situation and scenario. Flash peak. The rest of this team sets them up, but no real casualties. Now, UCK finally. Abilities back online. Da this harbor wall is pretty nice. Another thing with. Like with the, the Fnatic Harbor wall, it was just like basically replacing the Viper wall. Loud is like, no, we're taking more space. We know that we have to push you guys off this angle. Otherwise we can't, we can't win the round. So they're actually using, they're using Harbor the way that it's best used, which is to be aggressive. Like Harbor, everybody knows at this point, hopefully that Harbor is really bad on defense. Um, at least Harbor, not that he's bad on defense. Harbor is very bad at just playing like, uh, like a stalling, like do not come here type of smoke, but he's really good at taking space. 
And so they're using him to take space on the retake. Struggling, waiting out wide here. Harbour the defuse from Sadek, pushed back, and away, and a wide tip tap and a face there from the loud players remaining. And because you can do this crazy wall stuff, you deny a bunch of angles that they're maybe expecting to be able to use. Another thing I will say is they're not going for the op. They have money for op, but they're not going for the op because. I guess maybe because they know that if you use the op, then you have to babysit the jet more. So if you just play rifle jet, then the jet doesn't need as much help. Really good reactive harbor wall here to stop them from getting out to yellow. And really importantly, Viper taking space. Unless he's pushing up on the other. Because Les gets information here. Wing of the map. There's no walkabouts. So he's left himself. Waiting for the high type now. Fade. He's going to be using again. Flash dizzy. Dash forward from Zekin. Make sure to clear all that space. If somebody was holding out aggressively, it would have been mince meat. It's actually interesting how loud is still managing to tax sentinels to actually take the site and plant so they're throwing these smokes proactively do not push through yellow this is a viper smoke from less do not push through yellow do not push through yellow with the cascade they're making it hard to actually get to the site and plant but now to gain control of b main it's going to be the call maybe to go back into Zelsis. Yeah. And because of those two smokes, Sentinels is second guessing, and they're actually going to go back to A, which is where Loud is actually the strongest because of all of the stall utility that they have. Now is it's much more difficult to get the plan down and get Sassy his ult. Drone is going to confirm. I think. And again, super proactively, going for information with the drone. They're going to see nobody, and they're going to immediately start rotating A. These players have left the area. They've already gambled the Killjoy from middle. They kind of have decided we don't care about middle. We're just going to gamble the Killjoy A already. And then here we've got the stalling utility because we, we have the Viper and the Killjoy stuff together, making it difficult for them to plant, taxing them to actually get onto the site. I think Sentinels probably wins this round. But it's definitely felt harder. It's felt harder than any of the rounds that we saw Heretics play against Fnatic. Again, super aggressively taking space with the Harbor on the retake. It's not going to work out here, but you can see you can see the plan. You can see the plan. It's definitely different. Okay, they're four stacking with the op <laughs> and putting B on retake. That's not what I was expecting. That's got its own danger. Both teams on opposite sides of the map here to start this next round. Four players grouped up on defense on A, just pushing QCK into an aggressive angle. QCK getting really, really aggressive. So not just taking the angle where he needs somebody to watch his belt, but going even beyond that and taking a massive risk here. Somebody could just be up here watching and just kills him. Totally possible. But they threw so much util early on, I think, that maybe they feel comfortable that nobody is there. This is excellent for him. Yeah, but... And also, I assume the communication from Sadak is that there's four people running up B. I think you probably heard that as well. So he says, okay, take space A, take space A, take space A. ECK takes all of the space. And then continuing to get proactive. Because he's pushed up so far and there hasn't been any noise, he feels comfortable repositioning, takes all of this space. I think this is like legitimately what you have to do with this with this jet. Because the problem with, with Icebox, the problem with Icebox is that we have way too many lanes 
to watch with the op, right? Like, yes, we can have jet on yellow or here or whatever, but again, there's just, there's two lanes that they can come out of, which makes it really hard to play the op correctly. And so I think if you actually want to take a line with the operator, <laughs> like you actually have to take like this line, like this is, this is actual value with the op, which is insane to say, but <laughs> if you're this far up, at the very least, now you have A on lockdown, right? Same thing on B. Like if, if you could find a way to get to this spot where this is your line, now you actually have B value with the operator. Protocols in play. Molly forwards. That can just tanks it. Half his HP just removed, but they weren't expecting it. Still loud with all the kills. Two versus three. Sassy almost being taken out. Has to back his way to safety here. Fast flank of QCK. Might be causing some issues a little bit later into things. Now he's going to be notifying his presence. Super proactive. Here comes the harbor wall for the retake and the cove and the flank. Nice retake stuff. But they have the numbers advantage, so it's not like the most impressive thing. But just the proactivity is really, really good. It's definitely possible to make the harbor work. I think Loud is proving that. But I think you have to be way more proactive. You have to be way more aggressive with it. You have to be way more willing to gamble. And then sort of like deal with the risks of that. You can't just like try and play full map control with this comp. You have to be more sort of like pushing the attackers to do what you want them to do. You have to like dictate the pace of the round from the beginning of the round with your comp. Otherwise, you allow them to kind of just like pick you apart. Um, okay, so with all that being said, what are the chances that Fnatic is able to just like play like loud? And in my opinion, I think the chances of that are fairly low. I don't think it, I, I think what I've decided, at least from watching the game for a long time, is that most players have like a personality that they play the game with. And it's really hard to change who you are as a person. Right. So I don't I don't think that you could see somebody like I don't know who's a good example. I don't think you could see somebody like Nats be an entry duelist. I don't I don't think you'll ever see Nats be put on rays and be like, yeah, this guy looks like he knows exactly what he's supposed to be doing, just sending it in, killing three people, creating space that way. That's just not who he is. That's not how he thinks about the game, it's not who he it's not how he plays the game. And so I don't, I don't think that you can just say, all right, Fnatic, now you must play like Loud, who have a duelist as their smokes player, who have one of the most aggressive and proactive IGLs in the game, who have, you know, just like one of the most aggressive and proactive Sentinels in the game. Like, it's just not going to happen, right? And so I think that Fnatic playing the loud comp is just never going to actually work correctly. I don't think that that's how those players function. In my opinion, this can't work because this agent has to be played very, very aggressively and proactively and Boaster is not that player. Boaster is at his best when he is playing like reactive, um, and this is not this is not saying like this is this is bad, but Boaster's at his best when he's reading the game, and he's sort of like doing counter utility. So like his omen is good because he can like read what's happening. Okay, now's the right time to use my paranoia to stop an attack or to set up my teammate. Okay, now I'm using Astra stuff, and okay, now's a great time for me to stun here, hit a, a gravity well here. Here's here's like you know, using my smokes to lurk here, here and there, that type of stuff. But with Harbor, you need to be like, I'm smoking this angle off and I'm swinging it because I'm a duelist. Like that is how, that is how Harbor gets value. And so I think 
if you were going to reorganize this, this agent probably has to be played by Chronicle. Because Chronicle's played Duelist in the past. So I think Chronicle needs to play Harbor. Or Alfier needs to play Harbor. Probably. Probably should be Chronicle, I think. It's either Chronicle or Alfier that needs to play Harbor. Uh, Boaster needs to play Viper. Um, Alpha or Chronicle, I guess, plays the Killjoy, whichever one doesn't do that. I think this would be like the only way that this could work uh, if they wanted to play this comp. These, these can still be Yurka and Leo. It's going to be off here, I guess. But I, I think these two players would need to switch. Chronicle and, and Boaster would need to switch to get value out of this comp. And they would still have to be way more proactive. But I think also there's like other comps that can be played. Um, and so, for example, again, going back to like the, the fundamentals of the map, we must control middle. We must create pressure middle. We must have access to verticality. We must be able to stall or tax people for hitting a site. And we have to have good retake utility. So what I suggested to Boaster on this are these two comps. And the reason that I picked these comps is first, let's talk about the bottom one, because I think this one makes a little bit more sense than the top one, is that we have, okay, Viper, obviously we're playing Viper. Viper's, Viper's really good on this map. I think there are some comps where maybe you don't play Viper, but at a pro level, I think it's just too easy to just slot the Viper in and get value. Viper is in the comp. Viper has stall, Viper has the ability to create pressure middle, Viper has the ability to retake well. Um, so Viper fulfills a lot of our like uh, necessities on the map. Now, I'm immediately throwing Jet in the trash. I think Jet does nothing but make the comp weaker. So we need verticality. We must have verticality. And our agents that can get verticality are Jet, who is dead, Chamber, Omen, Rays. In my opinion, all three are good on this map. I think all three are viable. Um, so we'll just leave them here for now. Okay, we need to be able to control the middle of the map on defense. So for that, I think you kind of have to play a Sentinel. Um, and so obviously our options there are Killjoy, Cypher, Chamber, I think preferably you wouldn't put a person in middle most of the time. You just like to have utility watch it because it's way more important to have bodies over here and here to stop the actual site hits. So preferably you just have passive utility watching it. So, um, you know, I'm sure there's probably some like camera setups. Maybe camera can watch here. Maybe we just like trip. I don't know, throw a trip here, something like this. If we play a Cypher, what does Cypher also give us? Cypher probably gives us some Lurk potential up middle. You could throw a camera here to check. You could throw a cage here. And then you could Lurk a little bit. You could do a little stuff with Cypher like that. Uh, you could maybe control A or B with the camera and stack towards the other side of the map. Um, I don't hate Cypher, personally. I think Cypher has some potential on this map that should probably be explored by teams that are having problems playing it. Retake utility wise, Killjoy is clearly the best. I think it's not even close. Mollies are really important. The lockdown is insane. Chamber offers essentially nothing on retake. Cypher offers very little on retake as well. Um, so KJ probably gets the nod from me just based off of that. So let's go ahead and just put our KJ over here. For the info and proactivity, I think we maybe have like a couple different categories. I think KO. Sova and Fade are kind of in one category. Gecko in a slightly different category. Sky, not really in a category. <laughs> kind, of hard, kind of hard to play. Uh, Breach is like, he's over here, but we're probably not playing Breach because he doesn't really do a lot for us. 
uh, with, with the current cop that we're, we're cooking. So we'll say no breach. Um, I think the sky dog is just probably too bad on this map to use. So I think, I think what we really want is we want recon that actually like sees people or we want flash plus info. So I think realistically we, we kind of divide the initiators up into these two categories, which is flash plus info and then like full on recon. Um, and I think both are good. I think probably flash plus info is maybe a little bit more valuable on this map. If you can get both out of one character, it's probably really good. So maybe we take the gecko. Um, and then we have two more slots in this comp. Right now we're missing verticality and we are missing uh, a bit of attack power, I would say, a bit of like execute power. But most importantly, we're missing verticality. So for me, we could go with a chamber in addition to the killjoy. And then we have like really, really good coverage of our middle and our stalling because we now we have slows. Now we have extra information. Uh, now we also have the ability to op aggressively. We have the ability to get some verticality. Like, so that seems kind of interesting. I don't hate that but I also really don't like playing solo Viper on this map. I mean, I know you can, but I think it's just so much less flexible. So I'd really like to run another smokes here. And our options are Astra, which <laughs> I mean, God, maybe there's some world where Astra is decent on this map. I haven't really cooked with it too much, but the most obvious one is just Omen, right? Omen makes the most sense because we get a bit of that attack power. We have another sort of quote unquote flash. We have good retake utility with the Omen, with the smokes and the paranoia. We have access to verticality. We have the ability to do like basically the jet entry play where you teleport to yellow with a flash and then you fight here. We can do that with Omen. And we have the ability to op with this character. We have the ability to insta rotate with our teleport. All of these things seem really good to me. I really, really, really like Omen on this map. Um, I think it might be like the most underrated agent on this map. So in my opinion, I think these four agents are probably the four best agents on this map in slot. Um, and another thing that's really, really interesting to think about is the Gecko also does something else that I, I, I kind of forgot to mention which I think is probably really important is that being able to plant in a safe way is so valuable, right? So wingman gives us the ability to plant in a safe way. Sage gives us the ability to plant in a safe way. Harbor gives us the ability to plant in a safe way, at least like somewhat safe, somewhat safer than normal. I think info is probably the thing that we're least in control of. Like whether we play another Sentinel for defensive information or whether we play another initiator for attacking information, I think both are good. And if we could somehow get stall out of that agent as well, I think we're in a really good spot. So we can go with KO. Everybody in chat saying KO because this is the comp that is already being run. But now this is this is this is the next thing that we have to think about. Okay. So I think I think we've basically decided that this comp right here. These four are like really important, right? All four of these agents seem to be kind of like best in slot uh, to, to work on this map. However, we have to now think about roles, okay? We have to think about roles, who plays what. So this can be either Chronicle, Boaster, or Alfier, right? This probably has to be Alpha or Chronicle. This very likely just has to be Leo. I think. Could maybe be Chronicle. Um, or maybe Durka. <laughs> but probably Chronicle or Leo. This basically is Boaster. Um, or maybe Durka. And then our last spot needs to, right now we're desperately missing a Durka agent, right? 
Jerka doesn't play any of these other agents, at least from what we've seen. So roll comfort. Okay, so you can have the best comp in the world, but if your players can't play the agents to the level necessary to win, then you can't play the comp. That is that is really important to remember. So if I say, okay, we're playing KO, this is the best comp possible, but we don't have anybody who can play the KO because they have to play something else, then we have a huge problem, okay? So we can't play this comp if we don't have somebody to play the, the agent. So let's look at the players. Alfier. These are Alfier's most played agents. Here's the last 90 days. He's only been playing Senti, but he has played other stuff. Alfier plays Killjoy. We know he can play Raze at a high level. We know he can play the, uh, the Cypher. His chamber was very good when he was on the Turkish teams. We know he is good at Viper as well. Okay. We know he can play all five of these agents. Chronicle. Chronicle's playing whatever, right? <laughs> Chronicle has proven that he can play whatever we need him to play. He can play the Killjoy. He did that with pretty good stats back in the day. He can play the Rays. He can play the Viper. He can play the Sova. He can play the Breach. He's playing what he could play the chamber. <laughs> he can play the omen. Chronicle, Chronicle will fill whatever we need. We don't need to worry about Chronicle. He'll just play whatever we need. Leo. Leo's played a lot of Sage. Stats are pretty good. Leo's obviously the GOAT initiator. This is interesting to me. Leo's played quite a bit of Omen. It's seemingly his worst agent out of all of the agents that he's played several times. So maybe we don't want to put him on Omen, but maybe he plays the Omen. But I think probably we want Leo to be playing whatever initiator we have. We know Boaster's at his best when he's lurking, when he's setting up his team with utility. So Boaster probably should be playing um, some sort of supportive agent, I think is probably the best. He's either, either supportive or lurking. And then Durka. Durka, Durka, Durka. Durka has played basically three agents over the last two years. We know he has played Sova. Back in the day, he played Sova. He did pretty well in Sova. It's not like he can't play the Sova. But realistically, he's playing Duelist. He's playing Chamber. Maybe he plays some sort of info initiator, but seemingly unlikely. Where do we put Durka is the question. And out of the agents that we could fill this last slot with, Sova is like the most well understood probably. But if it's Sova, that means Durka is playing Omen. If we play Chamber, then this looks like very comfortable roles, right? Leo maybe has to adjust here. Durka plays Chamber. Alpha plays this. Boaster, play, or Boaster plays this. And Chronicle plays this. Our attack, probably not that great, but maybe it doesn't matter because it's Icebox. Is Solo Gecko sufficient? For information, that's another, that's another maybe. It's, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I mean, I think realistically, KO makes the most sense. If, if, we, if we didn't have agent role issues, I think KO makes the most sense. It's hard. I think, I think Leo maybe plays the KO. Chronicle plays this. Boaster plays this. Alpha plays this. Jerka plays the Omen. I think that's maybe the best we could do. I think the other, the other potential option is that they go the, the old G2 comp. But I think, maybe, I think maybe you modify this. Maybe you modify this and you don't play the Sova and you play a Gecko instead. The whole, the whole point of playing the triple Senti is that you don't have any gaps in your defense. 